Hey guys, hey everybody and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be unpacking a very interesting self-made wind turbine. A guy in southern Ukraine makes these wind turbines from asynchronous motors where he completely redoes the internal part of it and actually makes the wind turbine. Self-made blade, self-made tail. Um, clear sign that it is Ukrainian made anyways. Uh, and yeah, we will be doing this today, but before proceeding... Uh, Please hit the like and subscribe if you still haven't. Because, well, that's a very interesting stuff to see how can somebody make the turbine uh, in their own garage, so to say, from like local parts and without anything specific. And you will have some ideas how to do your own wind turbine. Uh, and probably like you will uh, get something made on your own. I don't know. Uh, I will undo this everything. We will see what's inside, how is it done, uh, like literally everything, every tiny detail. So if you are up to this content, stay connected and we will continue just in a fraction of a second. And that's how it looks like. Very, very interesting. Um, let's do this w one by one. First tail, this is aluminum plate, quite thick, I believe one millimeter. Tail plate, this is the only thing that I don't like here. Uh, you see there is a cut. That's not a good thing to do. That's something that I will actually redo. I will weld it together, I will leave it as a whole because I mean this is not a good thing to have this kind of uh, item. Uh, cut on two pieces because in time you will have troubles in this place and the tail may fall off. This is not safe in time and I will not let it stay like this uh, in my place. That's what I will redo immediately. Next thing, blades. And that's something that is very interesting. Look, the person that actually produced it put nice effort and made one, two and three dots which corresponds to Okay, here on hub we have two. Here we have, I don't know if you can see it, but three, yeah. And here must be one somewhere. Yeah, there is one. This means, and this makes me think that the hub is quite well balanced, but we will check it all on the wind, of course. Uh, and like, that's, that's, that's something that makes me confident that the hub was taking enough effort to make it working nicely what else what else is was interesting about this so this is the asynchronous motor itself right uh it has the cover as you may see like this kind of self-made cover it has the um, the load the, the, the load bearing mechanism you see it is slightly tilted up comparing to the to the surface right so it looks a little bit a little bit up to the to, to, to this plate like to this line if comparing everything is very standard like connections and joints nothing specific nothing crazy connection for the tail is quite decent i would say so one of the one of the bolts goes directly through and two of them lock it in uh this is the old soviet era asynchronous motor with fully redone inside now it has a neodymium magnets on the rotor and this is the number 30 that person who produced it it's the 30th generator of this design and it's very interesting so like literally very interesting thing is is in here how do you do the uh current transfer mechanism to make it rotational it uses bearing so like th that's what i know but i will have to show it to you and also a very interesting mechanism is how do you connect it it's a sleeve mounting mechanism again so you have to pick the pipe uh i don't know go for square go for round round probably is better that uh, is slightly less in diameter than this one you stick it inside and then just like screw it and uh, tighten it and then leave it like th like this and it will hold for a nice period of time cable is alum is is um Copper, 3 per 1.5 square millimeters. Standard copper wire, nothing specific. Uh, able to hold, like, I believe 15, 15 amps AC in, in the peaks, and even a little bit more, and it will not bore, burn. But, I mean, that's okay for a 48-volt design uh, to get some, I don't know, 
maybe even up to one kilowatt of power so that would be absolutely nice in, in for wind turbine it's absolutely okay it's more than enough and bear in mind it's three phase as always like it cannot be anything different so what i have to do next i will undo this all and we will check what is inside and well, before undoing it and checking what's inside, let's do the very simple test. Check the open circuit voltage, so to say, under no load conditions. This is important to understand how can it be, uh, so to say, hmm, categorized. I mean, like whether it's a standard 48 volt generator, 96 volt, 120 or something. Because you know that the 48 volt generator is reaching uh, 7, 70, 90 volts easily and even a little bit more. But to get over, I mean, yeah. Uh, first speed, trying to spin it up. Let me do it on the max. 73 volts, but let me do the following. Let me change the speed to the second one. I mean, that will be crazy because it will spin like idiot. But let's do this. Yeah, rotation is very crazy. You have seen it all, right? This is insane. I mean... That is crazy, <laughs> right? So, I mean, seriously, I may even try to input into my day a yeah, 5 kilowatt, which is still in this box. But anyways, um, I'm desperate to try it. <laughs> anyways, So, yeah. Uh, let me know what do you think uh, in the comments. And I'm, I mean, I'm continuing. I will dismantle it fully so you will see what's inside, definitely. So I generated a little bit of mess. To undo the very interesting mechanism that you guys have probably never ever seen before. So this is the, instead of brush, used um, current transfer mechanism, right? It's done via bearings. Uh, so first of all, first set of bearings is located over here. Uh, that one allows the wind turbine to actually spin on its ax axis. Um, I mean, like, just to rotate the yaw on the wind, right? And this is the current transfer mechanism. Uh, from inside, the wire goes, I mean, that one, yeah, that one that goes from the generator that's that's inside. That one goes in, 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 and is welded or soldered to the inner uh, bearing surface, right? And to the outer is this one, and then it goes outerware. So, I mean, this is crazily reliable probably never ever you will have it worn off but i mean i'm like lucky to get into because i see already a defect i mean this wire has to be either replaced or or at little at, at least a little bit more isolated i mean that's that's what has to be done um i'm i don't know what kind of material is used for this is isolators but uh, they are quite thick and they that's that's what they do they they prevent the current from going uh, anywhere else except where it is uh, required so let me do this small fix and i will like uh, do this uh, connect it together um it was sealed properly i mean it has this kind of tube it has this kind of um sealing and this one was also the, the cover was was put in here and it was silicon all the way up and down so no water gets into so there is no issues with this mm, i will have to redo this now because like right now but i'm happy i did it because well this has to be fixed definitely ah yeah mess yeah, that's normal that's that's what happens after taking back this cover um, the commutation cover, communication co cover, we can only see that there is just like a cable joint, nothing specific. But there is another interesting thing, thing that you can see. It's a second um, bearing, right? So the first one should be uh, on that side, on this side. And the second one is here. And that is a very, very good thing. On bigger Chinese wind turbines, for example, you will always find two bearings uh starting from as low as i believe m5 m6 series 
series on smaller ones on M3, you won't have it. But I mean, the fact that there are like two of these, it's a very good one. Disassembled it. And well, what can I say measured with this device? It's 65 mil in size of the magnets. Uh, it's 86 mil thick. And I mean, it's 68 millimeters, the, the, the steel side of the stator. Uh, the coil thickness is is it's fifty five uh, rounds in each coil with the zero point eight mils diameter uh, copper copper wire. Uh, that's how it is done. I mean, and given the size and given the parameters that I have seen uh, from all this, it's like really matching the M eight Chinese wind turbine. But I mean, in this case, it's way cheaper, in my case, right? So you cannot probably buy this uh, if you are not Ukrainian, because, like, I mean, the guy had produced only 30 of those, and maybe will produce 30 more, and then he will be in trouble, because these things will finish. I mean, they are not uh, really <laughs> able to, to buy. These are the used motors that are being redone into, uh, into this kind of state, or they were asynchronous before. And that's a trouble, because, um, I mean... You are limited. You are limited to this. But still, for those of you who are DIYers, I mean, this is a very good idea. How can you do this? And this is a very good example. How can you achieve um, the size and stability of what is uh, factory made? I mean, but that's the homemade wind turbine, literally, in the local garage, so to say. Uh, I will not be trying it on the wind today in this video because I'm missing the adapter. Uh, I see that this seal is missing. I mean, the sealant is missing at all. So I will have to just apply it fresh. Uh, I mean, these tiny stuff, the tiny things, they have to be done immediately before actually it's getting processed to whatever, whatever height. Uh, and uh, I have to do some preparation because I have to use uh, probably a setup with two or three different controllers, which I will be switching to check which one performs best in its mode for this exact wind turbine with this exact parameters. And then later on, I will play with the different wind wheels because like that's the that's the other hub I have. That one is the original one. And that's the one that I that I have for my 2.2 wind wheel that is not in use right now, but I probably will use it later on. So yeah, that's uh, my claim for you for today. I will give you the links where to get this thing, where to get those things, for example, things without which these tests and this assembly was would not be possible. So yeah, uh, let me know what do you think. If you guys can do this on your own, if you have been doing something like this, and what do you think in general about the self-made wind turbines? That's a very interesting topic. See you next. See you. See you soon. Bye.